Hey everybody, it's Rafi at Zurb and I got another video for you. In this one, I wanna show you around the button group component in Foundation. So the button group is really useful for toolbars, menus, or even sidebars. And it's basically a way to create a group of buttons. But the nice thing is that you can not only create a group of buttons, but you can also control their sizing and their widths and other things with the parent component. So let me show you what I mean by that. We're gonna hop over into a demo. So one thing you wanna know is that you wrap your buttons in a div with a class of button group. So once you do that, now you can control the, ch the child elements. So all these anchor tags or button tags with the class of button. So you can use either ones, button tags or anchor tags. It just depends on your context if you're linking someone or if you're creating an action. So we have our buttons inside of this button group wrapper, and now we can control some of the behavior with some parent level classes. So next to button group, we're going to add small. So just like with regular buttons, you can, you can change the sizing of the buttons with some simple classes. Now in this case, you can put it right here on the button group parent, so small, Tiny is another option, so you can make the buttons all really tiny. So it's gonna affect all the child buttons inside of this wrapper. And then you can even go large if you wanna go large. So that's one great way to manipulate these. And of course you can chain on multiple classes too. So we have our sizing class here. Let's say we wanna go with small because large is just too big. Um, and maybe this is gonna be like some kind of secondary social media nav. Um, so we have small, and then we can also attach our coloring classes on here. So just like with buttons, you can do an alert button, and it's gonna make all of them an alert button. Or we can do warning, or we can do secondary. So as you can see, it groups the buttons together. It gives you some simple classes that you can quickly uh, modify this button group to make it look the way that you want. So uh, we're going to leave it as an alert group. So we have chained on our small class and our alert class. Of course you can even chain on more, more classes. So there's also a really cool one that I think you'll probably find really useful is the expanded class. So along with um, just like you can with menus, you can make these button groups expand to fill the width of their container. Now, this button group is not inside any container right now, so it's going to take up the full width of the page. And I did put a little bit of body margin around here just so it doesn't touch the edges, but if you can imagine, this is the full width of the page because what this is, is expanding out. And that means that each item inside of it is also equal width. So there's three buttons, so they're all going to be 33.333% wide. Now if I add a fourth button in here, it's going to automatically know to split the widths evenly. So now we'll call that four. And now each button width is 25% width of the container it's in. So we could put this into a smaller container just to show you how that works. So we'll go ahead and put it in a row and then we'll add our columns. Let's do uh, medium dash six. Okay, so we'll go ahead and copy our button group into this set of columns and we'll fix that indentation. So now you can see that the button group is now constrained down to six columns, so total width is 50% width of the uh, page. And then there's also the fact that this is an expanded button group, so now each item is equal width. So this is how you can start to set up your button group to do the things that you want it to do. Now, since we're in a smaller container already, we can go ahead and show you one of the other modifier classes. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's, let's take off the expanded class. 
And so now you can see that they're just going to be um, auto width. So it's just the width of the text inside of the button and the, and the padding. And now we're going to make this uh, four columns. And now we're going to add our modifier class onto the button group. So we already have small and alert, but now we want to make these things stack vertically. So we can add the stacked class. So the stack class is now going to vertically stack this button group. Now you see the spacing is kept even on them and they're gonna fill the width of their container uh, each button is. So now it's in a four column. If I made this into a three column, you can see that it's gonna constrain that down. So you really wanna use the container or the columns to size your um, vertical button group. Uh, that way each button is the same width but now you can control that width with the outer container, like the columns here. So I just made a vertical button group. Now there are responsive classes to this stacking behavior. So we could uh, make this back to four and we can do something different. So we could do stacked for small. So stacked dash four dash small. And so now this button group is only going to stack on a small screen. So as you can see there, we're on a small screen and now it becomes stacked. And I'm also in a 12 column container uh, on a small screen, so it's gonna go full width. Now I didn't constrain that, so if I wanted to, I could do small dash, let's say eight or something like that, probably wouldn't make something like this normally, but usually it would be small 12. So if you want to be explicit, let's say small 12. So you can see that this button group now fills the full width on small. And then when we expand back out to um, like a medium or a large screen, then it's going to go horizontal again. So this is the responsive uh, stacking class. And there's also a uh, stack for medium, which is going to stack for small and medium, and then it's going to be horizontal on large. So you get some different classes there. And there's also one last thing I wanna show you, which is the split button. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is a split button. So basically a split button is a button that will have two different actions, but it's contained in what looks like one button, but it's actually a button group. So we start with our wrapper of button group, and then we have two buttons, anchor tags in this case. So one of them is a button with a class, uh, sorry, an anchor tag with a class of button and the, the text for that. And then the other one is an anchor tag with a class of button also, as you can see here. Now, this one also has the class of dropdown. Now, uh, we talk about this in the button documentation, but if you add the class of dropdown, then that uh, gets you an arrow. So, in this case, uh, the arrow only class also helps to make sure that it knows that there's no text next to it, so it's just gonna center that arrow right in the middle. So this is a specific styling for a button group. Now you might attach a drop-down menu to this action, you might attach something else, or you might even change the icon. So in this case, if I got rid of the drop-down class and I just wanted to put in my own custom icon, I definitely could do that. So I'm gonna put my icon font in there and now I have something different that is like gears or a cog for like a setting. And then from here, I can attach my dropdown or I can actually link this off to another page or I can even own, open a modal from this. So we can adjust this anchor tag to uh, create that separate action. But this is setting up the styles for that. So now you have the styles for a split button that can have two different actions. And uh, just one last note on this, the span with the class of show for SR, this is a visibility class, which we talk about in another um, video and documentation section. Uh, but show for screen reader basically uh, allows a screen reader to access this text and read it out to the user. So a visually impaired person using a screen reader will now get the context that this will 
show a menu or um, open settings in our case. So let's say open settings. So now they know what this action is going to do. So if they can't see that, that cog or that arrow or whatever the icon is, now they know what it does. So this is the button groups. There's a lot more to learn in Foundation and we have our intro to Foundation class. So I'd love to see you there. I'm one of the instructors. Uh, so definitely check that out.